Hello everyone, this is Professor Stewart uh, giving you this quick hit on visual aids. As you know, your speech for this class does require the use of a visual aid. Um, and specifically, that visual aid is going to be PowerPoint. Uh, it can be a Prezi if you want it to be, and I'm going to discuss both of those in going through this particular quick hit. This is just designed to give you uh, some helpful hints when it comes to creating and constructing a PowerPoint or a Prezi presentation for a public speech that you might have to give in the workplace or that you might have to give for a job interview. Uh, one of the prerequisites for this class is that you know how PowerPoint works, which is why I don't go into too specifics of how to, you know, open up Microsoft Office, get into PowerPoint, things of that nature. But this is designed to give you some tips that will be a benefit to you both in this class and outside of this class as well. So what's the whole purpose of using a visual aid or a presentation aid? Well, first things first, uh, it helps with understanding for the audience. Remember, the presentation aid or the visual aid that you're going to use isn't something that should be telling your speech. It should, it should be something that could just uh, emphasize certain things of your speech. And it allows the audience to listen to you as well as see a visual. So essentially, when you use a presentation aid with a public speech, you're hitting on all three learning styles, whether you learn visual, whether you learn, uh, whether you're a kinesthetic learner, uh, or whether you're an audio learner as well. You just learn by hearing. Uh, visual aid can help you hit on all three of those. So the purpose of a presentation aid, one of the reasons you want to have a presentation aid is uh, it'll help the, with the audience memory as we can see what you have up there. And it allows the listener to help map out the speech in their brain as well because hopefully your well-designed presentation aid, your well-designed PowerPoint or Prezi is going to almost act as a roadmap or uh, a roadmap for your audience when it comes to your particular speech, allowing them to frequently organize for various thoughts and ideas that you have presented to them in their brain. And more importantly, it could just help keep the, uh, the attention of the audience as well. Um, too often when you see public speeches, if there's not some sort of visual aid or handout or presentation aid and people are just sitting there listening, it can be pretty easy to tune out. Not only that, as I said before, uh, when you don't have a presentation aid, um, you're, you're essentially tuning out 33% or 33% of your audience is tuning out because some people are visual learners and kinesthetic learners as well. So the types of presentation aids, I'm just going to quickly go through this. Um, these are just, and most of it, is coming from your textbooks as well. It's just giving you ideas of what could be considered a presentation aid for various types of speeches that you might give outside of this classroom. Um, Three-dimensional objects, models, things of that nature. We really don't see those a lot more uh, now than, than what people used to use way back, uh, I hate to use that phrase, way back when. Um, but even the use of a person is a, is a type of visual aid as well. Look at that two-dimensional list things that are in there and this is something that you rarely see people use as well and one of the reasons um, we rarely see people use these is because of the advent of technology how, how technology has just increased so much in the last 10-15 years that you rarely see people use such things as charts and graphs and things but if they do use those they put them into a PowerPoint or they put them into a Prezi type presentation if for some reason your Prezi or your PowerPoint doesn't work and the only thing left in the room is a whiteboard or a chalkboard, that should be your very last resort. The reason why, and just an FYI, this could be a final exam question, uh, one of the reasons, or the main reason why you want to not use that immediately and make that your last resort is because you're turning your back on the audience. When we turn our back on the audience, we lose that visual connection that eye contact gives us, and now you have to work hard to reestablish that once again. And once you turn your back on the audience, some audience members can take that as a sign that, hey, they're not, they don't want to connect with me, so I'm just going to stop listening altogether. But when it comes to presentation aids and visual aids, PowerPoint and Prezi are your your top choices and I'll be honest here even in the business world uh, they still want you to most businesses that I've uh, researched and been in contact with still would like people to use PowerPoint over Prezi. Prezi is it's come on the scene in the last oh my gosh maybe 10 years or so uh, it's been on the scene and it's 
enhance itself. It's interesting, but one of the things people don't like about Prezi is it could be a bit too busy, uh, a bit too distracting, uh, too nauseating. There's even some articles out there about people sitting in Prezi presentations because of the way a Prezi presentation goes, they've gotten seasick. Uh, so it could be a bit busy. So even in the professional setting, if you're giving uh, if you're doing a job interview uh, for an oil and gas company in downtown Houston and they ask you to put together a presentation, I would not opt for Prezi. I would go straight for PowerPoint. And PowerPoint still uh, is sleek in its design. They have some differences that they've made changes uh, on on PowerPoint for Microsoft that it still allows you to play around with it and be uh, innovative with that particular PowerPoint versus a Prezi. But I'm not saying don't do Prezi for this presentation. If if you feel comfortable with Prezi and that's what you want to do, by all means, do it. Always do what you're comfortable doing, but just be aware of what some some companies and corporations say about Prezi. I don't know if you've given a speech before uh, this particular class, especially if you've given a speech using a PowerPoint, but the one thing you don't want to do is put your entire speech on the PowerPoint. That's not what a PowerPoint is used for. It's used for enhancement. It's used for uh, a guideline, a roadmap, if you will. So that's just something that you want to be aware of. And for this particular class, you're going to have to find a creative way that I'm going to, that's going to allow me to see your entire PowerPoint. When I say see your PowerPoint, I mean actually read it. Like I should be able to read what's on your screen. Uh, that doesn't mean you're giving your PowerPoint straight from your laptop. That's that's not going to work. That's not going to cut it for this particular speech. So that's one of the things that you you all have to do uh, when it comes to your speech outside of this class compared to my face-to-face -face classes. Well, they kind of have a built-in uh, because they can use the audio equipment in the classroom as well. I don't know if you're planning on showing a YouTube clip or things of that nature, but when you do that, no that goes against your time in this particular class. Also make note that when you use YouTube clips, one of the things I'm starting to notice with students using YouTube clips, and even when I consult people outside of the classroom using YouTube, my first question is, well, what does that clip have to do with your speech? Sometimes people show YouTube because they think they just need to, and in reality, what they just showed had nothing to do with what their speech was about. So you want to be careful about this. And if you're planning on using a YouTube clip in your, in your speech, for this class, and even outside of this class, you don't you don't want to show more than maybe 30 seconds to a minute. After that, we're, we're getting into overreaching territory where it's we're thinking to ourselves, are we here to listen to you give a speech? Or are we here to just watch YouTube clips all day? So take a look at this particular slide. Uh, if you want to keep coming back to this, a few guidelines. Make sure your PowerPoint slides are simple. Do not try to overdo it when it comes to PowerPoint. Simple and easy to read. A light font, I mean a light background uh, in terms of color scheme and a dark font. That's the easiest to read for practically everyone in the room. When you get to dark font, especially I uh, had a student maybe a year or two ago who did a black background with red font. Well, nobody in the classroom could read it. So make sure that you're selecting uh, what's simple and easy and sleek and ask yourself, do I have the power and the knowledge to put this together? And be consistent throughout your particular PowerPoint. If you're using light blue background with uh, black font, then that's what we should be consistent with throughout the entirety of the PowerPoint. Um, if you bold your headers, then all of your headers should be bolded throughout the consistency of the PowerPoint. I uh, had a student a couple of years ago who had, for some reason, a rainbow-colored dancing bear in the bottom left-hand corner of one of her slides. And my first response was, this has nothing to do with your speech topic, and why do you have that up there? Second slide, dancing rainbow-colored bear in the left-hand side. Third slide, dancing rainbow-colored bear. But on the fourth slide, there was no bear, and I was very, very upset. If you're going to have a dancing rainbow-colored bear, at least be consistent on every single slide. Something that you want to do with your PowerPoint, make sure you're practicing with it, understand uh, that you've gone through your speech, going through your PowerPoint, so you know uh, what slides next, you know uh, when to click to the next slide, think or things of that nature. But if you're not talking about your PowerPoint, at that particular moment, or you know for a fact I'm done presenting PowerPoint slides for my speech, but I still have more uh, verbal communication to get out, then you've got to be aware this is where I cut the slide off. 
Why am I cutting it off? Because I want the audience to stay focused specifically on me as the speaker. So a couple of final thoughts and for you when you start to put your visual aid together, your PowerPoint together, uh, make sure that you're positioning the visual aids where everyone in the audience can see. And as you're recording this, your thought process should be, how can I construct this visual aid, place it in the room that everybody in my audience can see, but as well as Professor Stewart when he watches this particular video recording of me. Um, make sure you're making eye contact and not just specifically reading straight from the PowerPoint screen. And once again, if you're going to have a YouTube clip, that's fine. I would be cautious because you have to ask yourself, well, what does this clip particularly have to do with my speech? So those are my thoughts on visual aids. If you have any questions about visual aids, uh, do not hesitate to email me. I'll also create a discussion board for visual aids as well. So if people have questions, comments, or tips that they want to give their classmates, that you can do that there.